Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well today. I've been thinking about doing something like this for a minute, but I wanted to show you guys the artistic, uh, the, the art stuff that I use the most commonly, especially when I'm going out and about, say I'm at like work or stuff like that, the things that I use the most commonly. So we're just here at my desk. We've got a, a Seb McKinnon Magic the Gathering mat that was on a limited print. Uh, I'm not going to show you the rest of my room because it's disgusting. We've got some uh, nuts from Burke, and then uh, we got some of my the artwork that either me or my sisters have done. That's a uh, Ziegmeier from my uh, from Autumn. That is Antebellum from Autumn as well. Goaded picture, and then we have the Aviator right there. Right. So those are those are all the things that I get to look at, which makes me very happy. But when I go out and about, obviously you got to have something to take your stuff in. This is my backpack from high school. This thing has held up incredibly well. I don't know if there's really a scuff anywhere on this thing. Like, you know, I, I've kind of babied it, but, you know, I've, I've had this thing for going on, like, I don't know, like seven years now. And this thing's still in great condition. And so, obviously, you're going to have to have a backpack if you're going to take stuff anywhere. Now, when it comes to the the paper... Hang on, let me put the camera down for a second. When it comes to the paper that I use, these are the four things that, as of current, I take around the most often. So this right here is, like, some some fairly crappy paper, but it's a ton of it. And I use this for, like, practicing and stuff like that. So a lot of pages in here are just spent on, like, singular ideas that don't look very good, right? So a lot of this is just practice stuff, right? There's Antebellum. That's one of the better pictures I've done. Uh, so, yeah, like, a lot of this is practice, as you can tell. Uh, there's the picture of the collar, right? So... And then I was still working on, uh, I was working on some, some detail work and working on the body stuff for the collar. So this is where a lot of like my not so good looking stuff is because I'm practicing ideas before I put it in one of the bigger, uh, books. So I'll just put this to the side right now. This is toned paper, this one here. Now, granted, I've not actually used really any of this yet. I have a picture of Antebellum planned for this one, but I haven't done it quite yet because this is going to be with color pencil, and I have not... I don't take my color pencils with me anywhere, so I haven't done this yet. But I thought I did a pretty good job with, like, the, the anatomy of her face and stuff like that, so I'll do that eventually, but not quite yet. So this this is one that... It's still in pristine condition, hasn't been sent through the ringer yet. Um, next, I'll show you a little bit of this one. This is where I do a lot of my larger stuff. And this isn't all the paper I have. It's just that these are the ones that I'm most commonly going to take with me places. Uh, I've had this book for like a pretty long time. <laughs> There's a really fat guoba for, for the people interested. Uh, here is the thing I did most recently. Um, this is going to be what I make the Claymore videos thumbnail with. I'm extremely happy with this artwork. Uh, the, 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 the references I used was Otsu from Vagabond, and then also the cover of a manga I've not read yet called just Claymore. Um, those were my references when I was doing this. Um, let me find it real quick. I have an older one of uh, Antebellum I did in here. Uh, give me T minus five seconds. Hold up, hold up. Let's see, T minus five seconds. Easy peasy. So there's an older one that I did of her. Uh, did it with like this all in graphite and whatnot. Um, yeah, so did that. And then we have the goaded book itself. This is the one that I, I try to go all out on every single page that I do. Um, so let me put this down, take this 
little pink thing off. Because this is hardback cover, uh, the pages want to like fold in the way, so I have to use this little string right here to keep them out of the way. But So we skip a page. This one was done entirely in graphite. This character is currently unnamed, but he will find his way into the story. Then we have a trifecta of the plague, right? So these are like manga practice, stuff like that. So we've got number one. Number two, this was the first ever impact panel I did. I was very happy with how this turned out, even though I probably overdid it a little bit. Um, for my first one, I was quite happy with it. And then we've got this picture, which I did in record time. I finished this entire thing when it comes to, like, inking it in, like, a couple hours, whereas usually it takes me quite a bit longer. The most recent picture I did that I have not uploaded is one of Benil. Um, I'm not quite as proud of this one because I didn't go into this one with a game plan, so this is not actually, like, verbatim what Benil looks like as a character, or Saul Major, but for one of my first drawings of him, it's not bad by any means, but it's not really what he looks like. Um, yeah, so essentially this sketchbook is supposed to be like going like full force with every single page that I do, like cover the entire page and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's what's up with that one. That is... Once this one is done in multiple years from now, this one's going to be the goat. That one's going to be the goat. Now, let me put the camera down again. I'm going to show you guys the materials that I use most commonly. So, for on-the-go, pencil sharpener. I mean, honestly, like, these handheld pencil sharpeners are kind of crap, honestly. Um, so, I don't use this any more than I have to. All of the uh, felt tip pens that I like using are in this very high dollar uh, <laughs> Sterilite. Okay, yeah, this costs $2, but like I have one of my sister's Copic markers in here. I have a white gel pen, and then just about everything else is some type of felt pen. Uh, they're all based on different sizes. And then while the majority of these are in just jet black, some of these are going to be in a dark gray, and then some are going to be in a brighter gray. They're all at the bottom. So, say like one like this, for example. The, the, the picture that the Claymore thumbnail is going to be was done very largely with my different brush pens. Dude, brush pens are hard to make work, but oh man, does it feel good when you make them work right. So I'm going to be spending some hours... Te uh, trying my hand at those. But yeah, I absolutely love this. It fits in my backpack, no problem. And whenever I want to ink something, you know, I might be getting interrupted at work, but there's nothing stopping me from taking my stuff. So that's really nice. And then we have this box that I got when, like, I was in, in elementary school. So I don't really care that Vader's on the front. I don't give a shit about Star Wars. But, and, and it's also received a little bit of damage over time. But this box is like literally the perfect size for what I need. So we have so many cool things in here. So the reason that there's all this cotton here is to keep the pencils as they move around in my backpack from having their uh, lead, their graphite tips broken stuff like that. We have a couple different uh, tools and whatnot in here. So this right here is a very precise focus, please. This is a very precise eraser. We have one, we have some refills for it as well. We have a less precise eraser, right? We have the one I use the most commonly, especially when sketching, which is our kneaded eraser. These things are my favorite thing, so I'm gonna use that a lot. Whenever I need to make straight lines or measure something, we have a small little ruler right here. This thing's the goat. Uh, now, this sandpaper scratch pad is actually so much more useful than you would think. So it allows you to kind of just like sharpen something on the go, but something that is super valuable about this is that it is essentially the only way I can think of that you can sharpen the lead of mechanical pencils. If you want this to, say, be more precise than it already is, well, just have a sandpaper pad, and as you can see, I've not used it, uh, I've not like thoroughly destroyed the sandpaper, like you can get a lot of use out of very little. So 
this this is so helpful when I want to make say my 0 0.7 or my 0 0.9 more precise which is really cool all of these green pencils are going to be essentially everything ranging between 4H and 8B graphite I don't use these as often as my mechanical pencils because I just prefer my me mechanical pencils so every last one of these is going to be somewhere in that range got a ton of them I can use them when I want to but not using them quite as often as I once did but I still want to carry them around with me just for the choice to do so and then this thing at the bottom that I'm having a hard time picking out is is a uh, thing for like being able to erase in specific patterns but I mean like you could technically use that for the the pencil too but I, I don't end up using that too often I will get to these here in just a second um, got a bigger eraser right there right one more of those and then some of my favorite stuff in here so we have all four different lead types all of these metal mechanical pencils here are such awesome quality as far as I'm concerned I love these things um, some of them I've only had for a couple months um, the gray and the blue one I've only had for a couple months but then the burgundy and the black one I've had for years. Um, they're super weighty in comparison to most pencils, so I love them for that alone. Like, they're super durable. But if I were to order these, the silver one here is 0.9 lead, which is what I like to use for sketching something out really quick with this big uh, lead. It has a very large lead ending. I don't know why I did that, as though my camera would focus on that. This one here is a dark blue. That is 0.7, which is what most people use. And then we have some very precise ones. We have the 0.5, which is great for detail work. And then if you're being like super obsessive with the detail, this burgundy one here is 0.3. So like this is a tiny lead, but the cool thing is, is that like, I mean, even though I use these as commonly as I do, like essentially any one of these have like three when you buy one of these, like you have like three green, whatever these are called, to hold them. I essentially just put all the, the contents of all three in a single one. That way I could have all of them in this box and taking up as little room as possible. Like so, right? And uh, yeah, I mean, this is my stuff. I just thought it'd be cool to show you guys because when I'm, say, at work and working on my stuff, like... It, it's so rare for me to run out of of things, be like, oh, if only I had this one specific thing, right? Like, that just doesn't end up happening. And the fact that it's able to fit in what a small container this is and such a small container as that, like, I'm, I'm just glad that I've collected these things over the years. So I thought I wanted to show you guys. But with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.